Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Episode. I'm Barry P. Cook. I'm here to talk to you about the latest episode of Superman and Lois, which was back after two long weeks. It was called The Dress. And as the episode starts, we get a flashback to 17 years ago, in which neither Clark nor Lois looked 17 years younger. <laughs> And Lois has been nominated for an award in journalism that's just one step below the Pulitzer, causing her to be concerned that she doesn't have a nice enough dress, even though she thinks these awards are just a popularity contest and not really about journalism. Back in the present, Lois's doctor tells her that her scans look good and that with one more round of chemo, she might be in the clear. John and Lana have a conversation about what went down last episode with Natalie and all that and with him in Mannheim, and it seems that Mannheim isn't in danger of going to jail after having tried to kill John because he's got great lawyers, but okay. John then gets a message from Mannheim saying that he wants to talk to him. Mannheim apparently wants to see his wife, Pia, who of course is being kept at the DOD, and John says he has to turn over everything he stole from the DOD if he wants to see her, which of course Mannheim denies even having taken to begin with. Lois is going through her closet to try to find clothes to donate to a charity drive. And she comes across what I'm guessing is the dress and that it's the one she wore to the gala 17 years ago. And then we get a flashback to 17 years ago and we see Lois telling Clark that she doesn't wanna go because she still thinks that the awards are a popularity contest and not about journalism. But we then see that Clark did indeed get her the dress and sort of talks her into going. Back in the present, Clark and John clash over John not wanting to let Mannheim see his wife until he cooperates, whereas Clark wants to allow him to do so because he knows what it's like to have a sick wife and he thinks it might get Mannheim to cooperate. Meanwhile, the kids try to help Natalie sort out what she's going to do about Mateo. Clark realizes that Lois plans to donate the dress with a bunch of other clothes to the drive, and he's not happy about it. Apparently, she doesn't think it's right to save it for a possible future occasion that she might be able to wear it to while someone could use it presently. But it feels like she's doing it because she's not sure that she has a future. That's how it felt to me. Anyway, Mateo confronts his father about being a criminal, which of course Mannheim denies. And when he's directly asked if he's ever killed anyone, he declines to be honest about the fact that he has. John and Natalie are menaced by Mannheim's dudes out in the street and John uses a supercharged electric stick on their asses, causing them to flee. Apparently, Lois is having a double mastectomy in the near future, which I don't think we knew up to this point. And Clark hasn't really talked to her about it beyond the logistics, because it's something that, you know, as a Superman, number one, and as a guy, he's never going to have to go through, and he doesn't know what to say. So Lana tells him that, it might be why she's doing things like giving away the dress and says that she wants to talk to Lois herself. The kids conspire to help Natalie get to see Mateo, even though she knows her dad probably won't like it. Lana does indeed go to talk to Lois about the dress and Lois is reluctant to open up, but Lana implores her to. Superman then implores Mannheim to just return the item so that he can see his wife and just then, John and the DOD burst in after Superman hears them coming and tells Mannheim that it wasn't his doing. Mannheim's place is then thoroughly searched, as are his computers. Superman confronts John about taking things in this direction, and the general agrees with Superman that it was a mistake. Lana and Lois do end up having a conversation about boobs, and it was uncomfortable. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know. I always think it's weird when they say boobs on TV. It turns out that Lois doesn't know going in whether or not she'll be able to have reconstruction after the surgery because it depends on how things go with the removal. We then flash back 17 years ago again and Lois is extremely uncomfortable in the dress and still wants to bail on the gala. Back in the present, Lois is worried about what's going to happen to her marriage after the surgery and Lana tells her that she needs to tell Clark that. Mateo and Natalie end up meeting, and Mateo says that while he had heard rumors about his dad, he never knew anything about his mother having powers. And he tells Natalie about what John is doing, keeping him and his father from seeing Pia, before confessing his love for Natalie, at which point she returns the sentiment and they smooch. Aww. The boys reconcile the differences and have a group hug with Sarah. Mannheim sticks one of his super creations on John. 
Clark tells Lois that no surgery could ever change the way he sees her. And she says that she knows that, but that how he sees her isn't the problem. Clark then hears John Henry in distress and goes to help him. That, of course, causes a fight to occur, which results in a whole bunch of property damage. People's cars, businesses, windows, and signs. It's awful. John manages to call his hammer to his location, which he uses against the goon to Superman's dismay because apparently it kills the guy. Mannheim reveals to Mateo all the stuff he's been working on. We get another flashback to 17 years prior, and we see that Lois doesn't win the award, which didn't dampen either her or Clark's ardor as they do it in the limo after deciding to get married at the farm right away. Back in the present, they talk about the fact that she might not ever feel like she wants to do it ever again, and Clark says that it's fine with him. Then Lois suggests that they do what they did when they got home the night of the gala, which involves them dressing up. And so Lois puts the dress on, and we see that apparently what they did was go flying, which they do again, and they have a nice little romantic scene. And that's where the episode ended. So they put off Bizarro yet again. I'm not really sure why they did that. They keep teasing Bizarro like every week or every other week, and then there's no Bizarro. So I don't know what's going on there. At some point, I, I would like to find out what made them decide to go the cancer route with Lois. I mean, of all the things they could have done. Because it's just odd. Like, it's odd that they did this in a superhero show. Now, this isn't the ordinary superhero show. It's very much a show about people, just people, human drama, people experiencing the ups and downs of the human condition and navigating relationships and situations. And it happens to have Superman and supervillains in it. <laughs> so, you know, nothing captures that whole thing better than someone going through a life-threatening disease does. So on the one hand, I get it, but they're really getting into it and depicting the hardship of it, the psychological aspect of it, the emotional, you know, aspect of it, dealing, especially in this episode with the whole thing about how someone who has to have a double mastectomy would then feel about their body and feel about themselves as a sexual being, which might be not at all. And of course, that's absolutely what these folks go through. And, you know, I don't think they could have been more genuine and more realistic about these things and the way people process them and what they go through when they're processing them. So, I mean, it's just great stuff. It's really doing its job of examining what it is to be a fragile human. But wow, <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> you know, heavy stuff. The great thing about it in addition to the fact that it's so, I think, realistic and relatable, you know, more so, of course, for people who've been through it than anyone else, but relatable for everyone, is that the acting is top notch. Top notch. The actress who plays Lois just hit it out of the park in this episode. I really believed that she was a person struggling with the psycho emotional weight of having to have a double mastectomy and you know what that would mean for her self-image what it would mean for her marriage and she just really made it seem real if i didn't know better i would have thought that the actress herself was going through it because just in her eyes you could see that she felt vulnerable and small and full of self-doubt and that's acting. Acting is more than delivering lines in a way that you can sort of buy it, which is really very common in TV and movies. You get these performances that are serviceable. But then you get performances that are fantastic. And I think everybody on this show, especially this season with the heavy stuff they've been dealing with, falls into that fantastic category. The young lady that plays Lana just amazing. I think the kids do a great job, especially given how young they are, of personifying these roles. I think, you know, these characters, I think they just, they do, they do excellently. And it's just a top-notch, 
television show. But I still want to know what in the world made them pick cancer. I'm just curious as to how it came up of all the things. So hopefully one day we'll find that out. I thought the writers did a brilliant job of crafting this episode around the dress because it became for Lois a symbol of all her fears related to the double mastectomy, uh, a touchstone, as it were, to, to that part of her consciousness. And to show the whole history of it in these flashbacks, you know, how it made her feel once upon a time versus how she feels now and how even Lana knew what was up with her by knowing that, you know, when she came to know that Lois wanted to get rid of the dress, which I'm wondering how she knew because they didn't know each other at the time and how would she have known the significance of that dress? But Lois must have told her about it at some point. We kind of have to assume. Anyway. I thought it was great that they built the episode around that and named it after that, because as good as all of these episodes are all the time, they're not crafted that way. A lot of TV isn't, but occasionally you get an episode that will function that way and take you on a journey surrounding a single event that, you know, in the past that has ramifications in the present and that you know, is really the focal point of the crux of the story. You know, the emotional weight of the story. And I thought that was really good. I thought they did a great job doing that. So that's really it. Again, I, I don't know why they're waiting on this Bizarro thing. I I, I want to see Bizarro. Like, is it going to happen? Hopefully it will. But I'm going to get out of here for now. I will, of course, be back next week to review next week's episode. Until I return, I wish you peace and long life.